Okay, hi students. Uh, this is Atish Kumar. In this lecture, I'm going to deliver about uh, uniform plane waves. Okay, so this is a chapter. This is a topic that we actually study in the electromagnetic wave equations and the characteristics. In that, the most important topic is uh, uniform plane wave. Okay, so first of all, why do we go for a wave called uniform plane wave when we already have electromagnetic waves okay why are we calling this particular wave is a uniform plane wave okay so before we go into that let us first define what is a wave okay this you might have studied in your physics itself a wave is defined as the physical phenomenon that occurs at one place at a given time is reproduced at other places at later times the time delay being proportional to the space separation from the first location, then the group of phenomena constitute a wave. That means simply speaking, whatever is the phenomenon, physical phenomenon that occurs at one place, let us take a sinusoidal variation like this. Sinusoidal variation like this. Okay, this is in a in a in a in one time period, right? This is happened at one place in this particular time period. Okay, let's say this is T. The same thing will be reproduced at later stages in an exactly same way. And this is happened in some other time period, okay? But this time period will be same. And the same thing will be again reproduced at later stages. Like this, the wave will be going on, okay? That's what is clearly mentioned as a wave. It is a physical phenomenon that occurs at one place at a given time, is reproduced at other places, at later times but the time delay is being directly proportional to the space separation from the first location right so this is what is called a wave but what is a plane wave and what is a uniform plane wave okay so to define this particular uniform plane wave let us first consider that particular wave is propagating in z direction okay initially initially let us try to consider let us try to consider the electromagnetic wave is propagating propagating in z direction okay so there is no there is no compulsion that we should take only in z direction okay whatever is valid for z direction the same thing the same analysis will also be valid for other two directions also that is x and y directions also okay so we are just considering for our uh, for our consideration okay nothing else right so let us first consider the wave is propagating in z direction so to first of all to go to this uh, uniform plane wave we will start to with the wave equation in free space the reason why we are taking the wave equations in free space is because the uniform plane wave will also exist in free space okay so the uniform plane wave the second consideration is the uniform plane waves the uniform plane waves will be defined will be defined only in free space only in free space okay so this is another very important point that we should consider okay so because the uniform plane waves will be defined only in free space let us consider the wave equations in free space which are derived already in terms of e and h okay so let us take them we know that we know that the wave equations are electromagnetic wave equations in free space r in free space r that is del square of e will be equal to mu naught epsilon naught into dou square e by dou t square this is equation number one and del square h 
will be equal to mu naught epsilon naught into dou square h by dou t square call this is equation number two okay so these are the wave equations in free space we have a similar wave equation in terms of h also sorry in terms of uh, conducting medium also but we don't consider the wave equations in conducting medium the reason is uh, uniform plane waves are not defined uh, for conducting mediums right uh, so let us try to expand this okay to define the uniform plane waves first we will try to expand this del square e as well as del square h whatever is valid for del square e expansion the same thing is valid for del square h expansion okay let us try to expand this first equation in which you substitute e equal to e x a x bar plus e y a y bar plus e z a z bar okay so this is what we have to consider okay so let us first take del square of e x a x bar plus e y a y bar plus e z a z bar right so this is the way we should expand mu naught epsilon naught into dou square by dou t square the same thing you have to do here also e x a x bar plus e y a y bar plus e z a z bar okay now it's very clear that you have the unit vectors a x bar a x bar on both sides a y bar a y bar on both sides and a z bar a z bar on both sides if you expand del square e x a x bar plus del square e y a y bar plus del square e z a z bar equal to mu mu naught epsilon naught into dou square e x by dou t square a x bar that is on comparing on comparing a x bar a y bar and a z bar unit terms on both sides okay so our, on comparison of uh, a x bar a y bar and a z bar in both sides then what we will be getting is you will be getting three equations here del square of e x will be equal to mu naught epsilon naught into dou square e x by dou t square call this is equation number three I'll be writing the other equations here itself. Del square e x e y will be equal to mu naught epsilon naught into dou square e y by dou t square. Call this is fourth equation. And similar, del square e z will be equal to mu naught epsilon naught into dou square e z by dou t square call this is fifth equation similarly if you expand this h also you will be getting three more equations in terms of hx hy and hz we will also try to write them mu naught epsilon naught into dou square hx by dou t square call this is sixth equation okay so if you don't want to write all six at least write only the equation in, in terms of uh, ex and ey ez okay you can uh, similarly we can say the expressions or equations in terms of hx, hy, and hz. So del square hy will be equal to mu naught epsilon naught into dou square hy by dou t square. Call this is seventh equation. And finally, del square hz will be equal to mu naught epsilon naught into dou square hz by dou t square. Call this is seventh equation right so once we get all six equations these are the six equations that we got you take any one of this equation and try to find out its solution why first of all why do we go for uh, solution okay the reason is with the electromagnetic wave equation we cannot get any information i'll give you one simple example okay in the continuity equation we might have derived uh, the equation is like dou rho v by dou t plus sigma by epsilon into rho v equal to zero this is a differential equation this is a differential equation but if you observe you cannot say anything about rho v in this differential equation but once you find out the solution you will be getting it as rho v equal to rho naught into e power minus sigma by epsilon into t that means in this solution, this is a solution, this is a differential equation. 
Okay, so in this solution, if you substitute t equal to zero, you can say rho v at t equal to zero is rho naught. And as time increases, rho v is going to decay exponentially. That means generally in wave equations or any other equations, what will be happening is with the, so with the equation, we cannot get any information. With the solution only, we will try to see the characteristics of that particular equation. Now, in the exactly same way, if you want to know about the electromagnetic wave equations, with these six equations, which are in terms of EX, EY, HX, HY, EZ, HZ, we cannot get any information. You have to find out the solutions. But here, you are not going to get the solution of E vector. You are going to get the solution of EX separately, EY separately, and EZ. Similarly, HX, HY, and HZ separately. You are not going to get the solution of the entire E vector and entire H vector. You have to get them individually. Okay. So that individual solution, if you try to find out, let us take for EX. Okay. Let us try to find out for this particular equation. We'll try to see whether we can able to get the solution or not. Okay. So the solution that we are trying to find out is for del square EX is equal to mu naught epsilon naught into dou square ex by dou t square okay let us try to find out the solution but whenever we have del square we will never get the solution of it okay then what we will do is we will try to expand this del square del square expansion everybody is mostly familiar with it it is dou square by dou x square that is dou square ex by dou x square plus dou square by dou y square that is dou square ex by dou y square plus dou square ex by dou z square is equal to mu naught epsilon naught into dou square ex by dou t square or else we can say minus of this is equal to zero okay this is what is our differential equation which which is a second order equation if you observe this particular equation ex is a function of x ex is also a function of y ex is also a function of z ex is a function of time that means we can simply say ex is a function of x y z and time okay so when this is the case even if you call the greatest mathematicians of all time and ask them to find out the solution of this particular equation you will never get the solution of this ex because ex is now a function of x, y, z, and time. Okay, even if you go by the different different methods like a variable separable method, direct solution method, okay, any method, if you go for it, you will never get the solution. The reason is the variable ex, if it is a function of maximum two independent variables, then we can able to get the solution. But here it is a function of four independent variable, you will never get the solution so we can say there is no solution for this particular wave equation which is actually the electromagnetic wave we call it as electromagnetic wave equation in free space okay because of this particular electromagnetic wave which is not getting the solution okay which is not getting the solution we have to modify this particular equation we need to modify this particular equation to get the solution of it to get the solution of it we have to make this ex and similarly ey hx hy and all other parameters or components of e vector and h vector must be made a function of only two independent variables in that time is mandatory okay because all these uh, components or fields must be a function of time they are all time varying fields in that one component must be time but other component must be either x or y or z either x or y or z so which one we should take it okay and if you suppose take that if you want to mention that ex is a function of x and time time is mandatory and if you take it as a function of x what does that indicates that if you are taking that particular ex or ey or hx or hy are a functions of x only that indicates that wave is propagating in x direction if it, the wave is propagating in x direction then only these ex ey hx hy will be a function of x 
if it is only a function of y and time that means the wave is propagating in y direction if it is a function of only z okay that means the wave is propagating in z direction this is how we will be remodeling okay you may ask me sir why is it like that okay we are going to define the uniform plane wave like that whether we don't know that will exist or not but we will be trying to define the uniform plane wave in such a way that this ex is a function of only this z and the time and this ex will be making independent of this x and y similarly the other components ey hx hy ez hz but to make like that we have to define that uniform plane wave in a proper way otherwise it's not going to work okay so now i hope everybody understood why what is the reason behind going for uniform plane wave see whatever we have seen is for uni electromagnetic wave this electromagnetic wave cannot have the solution when we don't have the solution we cannot able to see the characteristics of this entire wave that's the reason we are going for uniform plane wave okay uniform plane wave is the one in which that every component must be made function of only two independent variables okay that either time and ex or x or y or z if it is a function of time and z you have to make those components independent of x and y similarly the other cases right now let us try to define uniform plane wave definition of uniform plane wave right we'll be defining it in several ways okay we'll be seeing all of them but all will be actually uh, similar okay or we can say the final uh, uh, meaning that we are going to get will be same okay so i'll be giving you my own my own way of saying okay so let us uh, try to first uh, take the assumption that we have taken okay we have already taken that the wave are the electromagnetic wave we have considered is propagating is propagating in z direction right so the same consideration i'll be considering here i'll be taking here okay so we are now defining a uniform plane wave for which it is propagating in z direction okay so let us try to now define the uniform plane wave which is also propagating in z direction if you can able to define the uniform plane wave which is propagating in z direction you can able to define the same uniform plane wave which is propagating in x and y directions also right so a wave uniform plane wave is defined as uniform please keep this in mind uniform plane wave is defined as is defined as the wave propagating in z direction which has its electric field vector and magnetic field vectors are independent of independent of x and y directions x and y directions okay so this is how or we can other we can say it in other way as a wave propagating in z direction is said to be uniform plane wave if it's e and h vectors are independent of x and y directions what is the meaning of e vector and h vector are independent of x and y direction it's very clear that when e and h are independent of x and y direction means these are functions of z only these are functions of z only but instead of saying e and h are functions of z we are calling it as e and h are independent of x and y directions okay the same thing we can generally see in different different textbooks as we'll also try to see that the definition is a plane wave a plane wave is said to be is said to be 
uniform plane wave UPW UPW if E and H are this is the most uh, frequent uh, definition that most of the people will be writing. A plane wave is said to be uniform plane wave if it's E and H are uniform E and H are uniform in the plane perpendicular to perpendicular to the direction of propagation. perpendicular to the direction of propagation that is indirectly means e and h r e and h vary only in the direction of propagation okay observe the above one and below one carefully a wave propagating in z direction there i am clearly mentioning a particular direction right okay if the wave is propagating in z direction is said to be uniform plane wave if it's uh, then it's uh, e and h are independent of x and y or e and h are functions of only z but here in this case i am not mentioning the particular direction of propagation but a plane wave is said to be uniform plane wave if it's if it's uh, e and h are uniform in a plane perpendicular to the direction of propagation if you assume if you assume carefully observe here if you assume this is one field this is another field and this is let's say z which is the direction of propagation okay this x and y will be the two directions in which let us assume e is in which that e field x is the e is the direction in which uh, sorry E is the field in which which is in the direction of x and uh, h is the field which is in the direction of y e is the field which is in the direction of x and h is the field which is in the direction of y and z is the direction of propagation right so z is the direction of propagation and this z direction of propagation which is perpendicular to both these fields observe carefully that means if this z is the direction of propagation this x y we can call it as a plane okay x y is e h plane or x y plane you can call it as right a plane wave is said to be uniform plane wave if it's e and h are uniform that means in this x and y directions the e and h values are uniform uniform means constant they're not changing that's what is mentioned e and h are independent of x and y if x z is the direction of propagation e and h are independent of x and y are uniform both are same that means e and h are uniform in a plane perpendicular to the direction of propagation the direction of propagation here is z the plane which is perpendicular to the direction of propagation is x y which is nothing but e h plane there e and h are constant or uniform both are same a wave propagating in z direction is said to be uniform plane wave if it's e and h are independent of x and y is nothing but e and h are functions of z or a plane wave is said to be uniform plane wave if it's e and h are uniform in the plane perpendicular to the direction of propagation if you want to write this or this both are fine nobody will question why you have written like this but people will be generally getting confused if you mention the direction okay because most of the people will be familiar with this you can better go for this else if you are clearly mentioning that wave is propagating in z direction you can also say the wave is propagating let's say in x direction then how do you define this a a wave propagating in x direction is said to be uniform plane wave if it's e and h are independent of y and z y and z because direction of propagation is x if it is let's say propagating in y direction then e and h are independent of x and uh, x and z directions okay e and h are independent of x and z they are functions of only y it all depends on 
what direction that uniform plane wave is propagating. So my point here is very clear. I am making the uniform plane or electromagnetic wave to be propagating in Z direction. Right, so once you define the most important part is, let us try to simplify the six equations which we have derived earlier. So when observe carefully, when E and H are independent of these X and Y directions, what is the meaning of this? Let us try to understand first. Suppose if F is a function of, let's say X. Okay, F is a function of X or f is a function uh, some g is a function of x okay then with respect to y if i differentiate this f what will be its value i am differentiating with respect to y twice but f is a function of x everybody know its value is zero because it, f is a function of x and you are differentiating with respect to y similarly do square by do y square of gx is also zero because g is a function of x and you are differentiating with respect to y similarly here when e and h are functions of only z it's very clearly that e vector is a function of uh, z means e will be having several components like ex ey and ez h is a vector which is having the components like hx hy and hz all these are functions of only z all these are functions of only z they are independent of x and y x and y okay all these are independent of x and y then if you observe dou square by dou x square of ex but ex is basically a function of z will have to give zero similarly dou square by dou square by dou y square if you suppose take it as ex or ey or anything which will be giving you zero similarly do square of hx or hy by do x square or y square will be giving you zero but do square by do z square of ex or ey or hx or hy will not be zero because all these are functions of z whenever these are all functions of z when you differentiate with respect to z it will not give you zero now let's go i i hope it is very clear to all of you now let's go back to the six equations which are derived this is one equation this is another equation three four five six but when it comes to the finding out the solution you don't have this fifth equation and seventh equation. Okay, let us see why. Why that EZ and HZ components won't exist. In the textbook, what he'll mention is the components which are in the direction of propagation will be zero. Okay, that is fine. But because that statement is, is given, you, can, you cannot say those two equations uh, will be made zero because those two equations are becoming zero okay that means ez and hz will be becoming zero they gave that statement i hope it is very clear because these are automatically becoming zero that statement is given because of that statement you cannot say these two components uh, will be zero please try to observe i hope it is it is clear so first i'll be writing those uh, six equations again not six i'll write only four the first one is uh, i'll i'll try to expand that also. that expanded equation is very important do square ex by do x square plus do square ex by do y square plus do square ex by do z square minus mu naught epsilon naught into dou square e x by dou t square is equal to zero you will be similarly getting all remaining five equations but what i am saying is that ez equation which is like this is not existing because ez will be zero i'll tell you don't worry hz the equation which is of the same form in which hz is also there like dou square hz by dou x square and so on will not exist the reason is hz is zero 
okay why is this ez and hz will be becoming zero and because of that there will be only four equations like this which is in terms of ex ey hx and hy these two equations will not exist the reason is how this ez will be becoming zero and hz will be becoming zero for that let us to prove this to prove this i'm once again i'm telling you because of that statement will be given in the textbook you can never say that these two equate these two components will be zero the statement is the components yeah, for a uniform plane wave the components which are in the direction of z see observe this is the direction of propagation which we have assumed and the components which are in the direction of propagation are ez and hz of course these are becoming zero but it is these are not becoming zero just because of that statement that statement is obtained because these components have become zero let us first try to find out with what reason we are saying that these two are zero okay let us try to see that from the maxwell's equations which we have okay because we can use our maxwell equations anyway in free space del dot d is equal to rho v but rho v will be zero this is one maxwell equation and another is del dot b is equal to zero if you write this d because you have to first assume that wave is Uh, this particular wave will be in a linear homogeneous isotropic medium whenever it is a linear medium the d equal to epsilon not e and epsilon not if you bring out okay then this del dot e will be zero and from this h mu not if you bring it out del dot h will be zero expand this in rectangular coordinate system you will you are doing this entire thing in rectangular coordinate system that's the reason you will be having ex ey hx H Y E Z H Z like that. Okay, then if you expand, do by do x of E X first, do by do y of E Y plus do by do z of E Z is equal to zero. I hope now everybody clearly understood why E Z is zero here. The reason is I said just now E X is a clear function of Z. when ex is a clear function of z with respect to x if you differentiate this will become zero when ey is also clear function of z this expression will also be zero then what is do by do z of ez is equal to zero so observe carefully if ez is actually a function of z but still it is becoming zero that means when it is a function of z it will never become zero that means what ez is not a function there ez itself is zero there then only this differentiation will have to give you zero that's the reason ez if it is zero then only the do by do z of zero will become zero otherwise if this is a function of z then you cannot say this is equal to zero but this entire expression is zero from the wave equation in free space right so in this way you can say ez is zero from the same expression del dot h equal to 0 do by do x of h x plus do by do y of h y plus do by do z of h z from that you will absolutely get h z is also equal to 0 that's the reason these two equations okay the equations which consist of ez and h z will not be present there will be only ex equation ey equation h x equation and h y equation but still in this what will be happening in this what will be happening i said just now from the definition of uniform plane wave ex is a function of z but with respect to it will be zero ex is a function of z with respect to it is zero but ex when it is a function of z this will not be zero that means this particular part will be present ex of course is a function of time and this also will not be zero therefore what you will be getting from those four equations are Do square e x by do z square. I'll be writing all four minus mu naught epsilon naught into do square e x by do t square is equal to zero. Let us try to denote it with some number. Okay, the number seven, right? So after that, let us keep it as eight. Okay, so this is eight equation. And similarly, do square e y will be there. E y by do z square only minus mu naught epsilon naught into do square e y by do t square. 
is equal to zero. This is let's say ninth equation. Similarly, h x and h y because e z is zero. Do square h x by do z square minus mu naught epsilon naught into do square h x by do t square is equal to zero. Let us call this is tenth equation. Do square h x by do sorry this is h y. Do z square minus mu naught epsilon naught into do square h y by do t square equal to zero. Call this is eleventh equation. Now, if you observe the beginning, okay, we had previously e x, which is a function of x, y, z, and time. Now these e x, e y, h x, and h y, they are functions of only z and time. When the when any variable is a function of only two independent variable, we can absolutely have the solution for it. Okay, but that solution is also very difficult to get it. But we don't go for how to get the solution at all. We can directly write the rough format of that particular solution for e x e y, which will be similar solution, and h x h y, which will be having a similar solution, right? So we'll be now writing the solution of uh, first two equations, that is eight and nine. The solution of the solution of eight and nine equations is. Let us try to write the two solutions. Sorry, solution of uh, two components at one place, which is. In rough format as E M plus, which is the amplitude in for the forward wave, cos of omega t minus beta z. Don't put any unit vector here. These are just uh, components which are not in vector form. And E M minus cos of cos of omega t. Sorry, omega t. Omega t plus beta z. I'll I'll just describe all these. Don't worry. And we also try to write the expression solution of h x and h y as the only difference is in place of maximum amplitude e m plus and minimum amplitude e m minus. We'll be just uh, writing uh, h m plus cos. Sorry, this is not minimum amplitude. It is the maximum amplitude of e in Reverse direction. That is negative z direction. It is the maximum amplitude of e in the forward direction. Okay, there are no minimum uh, value, minimum amplitude values. All are maximum only. H m plus cos of only difference is here e m plus and here it is h m plus omega t minus beta z plus h m minus cos of omega t plus beta z. Okay, but what these components indicate? This E M plus and H M plus indicates the maximum amplitude of E and H in forward direction. Forward direction means positive Z direction, and E M minus and H M minus will be indicating the maximum amplitude of the reverse wave or reflected wave, wave which is propagating in negative Z direction. Okay, this I'll be calling it as first wave, and this I'll be calling it as Second wave. The first wave is always the wave which is propagating in z direction, positive z direction. First term indicates the uniform plane wave propagating propagating in plus z direction, plus z direction, right? And second term always indicates the uniform plane wave. Propagating in minus z direction, minus z direction. Okay, so omega by beta we always call it as phase velocity. So you can also simplify that e x, e y in another form because it's not compulsory that you will always get uh, cos because we are taking the real part of it. We will be getting it in the form of cos, uh, but generally it is in the form of f, which is a function which may be cos or sine or any other function, and it is z minus v t because it's a even function. We can either write v t minus z or z minus v t. Okay, that that is the another way of uh, writing this. 
or else we can also write this ex ey or hx hy as this is let's say em which is the amplitude i'll be considering only the first part first part if you consider uh, we can say this is the real part of this is the real part of em into e power minus gamma z into e power j omega t okay there gamma is the propagation constant which is alpha plus j beta and this term indicates it's a time varying function okay we can also write this as we can also write this as real part of em into e power minus gamma z can be expanded as e power minus alpha z into e power minus j beta z into e power j omega t right okay if you bring this alpha term outside which is em into e power minus alpha z then real part of this will become cos of cos of omega t minus beta z like this you will be getting but don't neglect this e power minus alpha z if it is uniform plane wave where it is a lossless then alpha most of the times will be zero but if it is not lossless medium where you will be having some attenuation alpha then you have to even consider this particular expression right so this is about uniform plane wave the reason why we actually go for the uniform plane wave is as we are not able, not getting the solution of the electromagnetic wave when it is a when every component is a function of four independent variables then we can able to define this uniform plane wave and we will be getting the solution so but practically uniform plane waves will not exist practically uniform plane waves will not exist will be trying to modify okay and uh, by doing some uh, what we call uh, uh, adjustments we will be trying to consider the given electromagnetic wave itself is called as a uniform plane wave okay because if it is if it is said that uh, it is propagating in uh, some direction and it is propagating in uh, free space then mostly okay we will be calling that electromagnetic wave which is a uniform plane wave but practically the waves which are propagating in free space you cannot actually call them as uniform plane wave that is i'm i'm telling about uh, the practical uh, purposes okay so thank you very much i hope uh, the uniform plane wave concept is very much clear to all of you if you really like this video please subscribe my channel Thank you very much.